<laughs> so if you don't mind, uh, we'll just have uh, the real dessert first before you. So uh, before we have uh, the other dessert. Uh, so I'll just do, I'll do a quick uh, introduction. I think uh, professionally most of you know about uh, Yogain. Uh, Yogain uh, is a IIT Bombay class of uh, 72 Beverly H7. Any H7 guys out there? <laughs> Uh, what you might know is uh, that he's a very successful uh, Silicon Valley uh, executive, uh, has a, had a, a distinguished career as an uh, entrepreneur and then as a venture capitalist. Uh, what you might not know very well is uh, that he is an engineer's engineer in the sense uh, his name is on a whole bunch of uh, original TCPIP. Um, standards, uh, specification uh, documents. Um, so he was a, a very much of a techie when he did his PhD at Stanford. Uh, for his distinguished career, IIT Bombay has uh, conferred the distinguished alumni status on him. Uh, in terms of his other interests, uh, he's uh, a very big proponent and has, uh, is an avid follower of uh, visual and performing arts. He's on the board of directors of uh, the Oregon uh, Shakespeare uh, Society. Uh, and has written actually a bunch of apps for theatre. Uh, he has very fond memories of his IIT days, uh, walking from at seven in flip flops in the rain uh, to the main building, uh, and uh, carrying the peace square and eating medoras at uh, RK. If you guys uh, still remember. Uh, without any further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Yogi. Introduction. I'm, the lunch is staring at all of you, I know, so uh, you know, I hope to tell you a few things that are slightly different from what you've heard. Uh, but I want to start off by saying that I'm delighted to see so many unfamiliar faces in the audience. But to me, that means that IIT Bombay and the other IITs that are here you know, are continuing to do the superb job of producing people like you who come to Silicon Valley and have become incredibly successful. So it's been, you know, 42 years since I came here, and you know, year after year, you get these incredibly talented people. And so when Sandeep asked me to speak today, quite frankly, I wasn't sure what to say. And that's because the media has all of these stories and articles from pundits, the CEOs, venture capitalists, uh, entrepreneurs, politicians, university professors, all telling you how to be leaders in how to be a better entrepreneur. And I think it was impossible for me to add any more words of wisdom. And the last thing you wanted me to do was bore you by curating what other people have already told you. So I thought I'd take a slightly different tack and give you a perspective, my perspective, of what it means to be a leader in the context of being an Indian. And I base this on my observations and many personal experiences I've had here over the last 40 years. And Kumar is absolutely right, where is Kumar, my, there he is, that I've lived my venture capital <laughs> career using that particular criteria, and that is, is a particular product or business a painkiller or a vitamin, because it really clearly you know, focuses the issue. So, um, when I think of leadership, I don't think of it as somebody being a leader. Leadership is a system. That is, a leader has to lead somebody. So it's the leader and the led. Without having a system, you can't really perform the function of being a leader. And the interaction between the leader and the led is a very complex one, with a lot of dynamic tension. And something that great leaders learn how to deal with. And what I wanted to tell you a little bit about is my perspective of what does this entail. No prescription, just a perspective. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the esoterics of what this particular interaction should be or might be, but to illustrate an example. Some years ago, I was in Delhi, and I was meeting Raghur Rai. Some of you may know. He's a very well-known uh, photographer. He got his career being a photojournalist in the Indian Express. And he was showing me all these photographs he had taken of Indira Gandhi talking to the community at large. And as you know, photographers have a photographer's eye. They capture the essence. 
And when I looked at these photographs, I was absolutely amazed at seeing on a printed piece of paper the kind of interdependency a leader and the left has. You could see it in Indira Gandhi's eyes, and you could see it in the eyes and the body language of the people she was talking about. So politicians are incredibly astute as to the leader and the led dynamic. Unfortunately, as you know, it doesn't always work out well, and politicians have a way of using this relationship to their advantage, and that's what leads to things like the Arab Spring. But great leaders know how to take this particular dynamic and, uh, and use it in order to do great things. So what I want to do now is return back to the Bay Area and uh, sort of go back in time 42 years ago when I came here in 1972. The Bay Area or Silicon Valley as we talk about it was a very, very different place. When I was at Stanford, there might have been 20, 25 people from India and Pakistan who were graduate students there. Clearly we all knew each other, we uh, collaborated, but for the most part we were on our individual journey. We were on our journey of doing what we wanted to do and figuring it out as to what it took to be successful as an immigrant in this country. And now, of course, so much has been written about why Silicon Valley owes its strength uh, to immigrants and people like all of you. Now, things have changed, as you know, over the last 40 years. There have been continuous waves of immigration. What that has done is create an incredibly vibrant community. Great Indian restaurants, great Indian grocery stores, you know, Bollywood theaters, community centers, all of this stuff is amazing. Now, I wish some of it was there when I was there. But uh, what I want to focus on is what is the life of a newcomer? Somebody like yourself who might come to Stanford today. They come to Stanford, well, a whole bunch of IITians already there, you know. And in your research group, there are probably your TAs, and the probability that your CS or W professor is from India is extremely high. You get your degree, and then you go work for one of the hotshots like you, who are from India. And you're successful, you buy a house, your kids go to Harker, things are going extremely well. But I think there's a danger signal here as to what happens if you live in this lovely cocoon? What does it do to your ability to go to the next step in your career as a leader? Is it good news or should you be doing something beyond what you're doing today in order to really affect your ability to be a great leader over time when you become CEOs of companies or you do things above and beyond uh, the technical profession that you've particularly chosen to pursue? So from my point of view, going back to this notion that leadership is a system, you really have to understand who it is that you're leading. Not just people like yourselves, but people of a wide variety, people with different social, economic, political, and cultural backgrounds. You can't afford any longer as successful Indian entrepreneurs to live in isolation. You've got to broaden out the way you interact with the community at large if you truly want to become a leader. So where is all this going? You know, what is it that I'm trying to sort of hope to leave with you today as you go for lunch and have a continuation of this discussion? I think it's important for all of you here to understand that there's something great about Western civilization, this country, that has made it possible for people like me and for people like you to be successful. What is the ethos that drives this kind of cultural change, whether it comes you know, from the inherent Western civilization or augmented by the effect of the Pacific. You really have to think about these larger and broader issues. Now, so I just want to give you an example. You know, I returned uh, earlier this week from two weeks in Italy. I went on a Stanford travel study trip to Venice, and there was a Stanford professor there and all of us know about the Renaissance and this and that. 
But to me, what is truly amazing spending a week in Venice was understanding that the Venetians in the 11th and 12th century have had a greater impact on Western civilization than all of the stuff that we talk about in Silicon Valley. They were the true entrepreneurs who helped define what we think of today as education, universities, government, art, and the manner in which you do business. The merchants of Venice were the entrepreneurs of their day. They basically created the concept of a city-state and broke away from the church, much as you're beginning to see large corporations today defining the economic and the social trends. You know, a company like Google or Facebook is no different than the Medicis or some of the people in the Venetian empires who basically created you know, what we have today. So you really have to think about this in, in the broad sense, and I encourage you all to break out of this beautiful, lovely cocoon that you're living in and think broadly. Now I'm going to, in the traditional interactive sense, ask you a couple of questions that's going to